Hi and welcome back. In this lecture, we are discussing Key Insight 4 Enabling Personalization at Scale. So, you might have come across this word personalization and you might also have come across the word customization. Is there a difference between personalization and customization or are they both the same? Well, let's find out. If you look at personalization, it's always initiated by the business based on data. So based on the data that the customer provides, so things like previous purchases or the history, browsing history, and all this data is used for personalization. When you look at customization, it's basically initiated by the customer based on their interests. So basically customers tell that these are their interests and then content is served based on the interest set by the customer. If you look at personalization on the other hand, it relies on data. How effective is the data collection strategy? Are you able to understand the customer in a much more effective manner than your competitors? And all these other factors. If you look at customization, it requires a conscious input from the user. The customer or the user must tell, these are my interests, these are what I like to watch and so forth. But if you look at personalization, it requires no conscious input from anyone. It's usually done through a lot of information systems which collect data and then aggregate that data to create a much more personalized profile for each and every single customer. But if you look at customization, it requires a conscious input from the user. Moving forward, if you look at personalization, information systems learn about the user's interests autonomously, meaning without any human input, and then tailor the product or service to the customer's individual characteristics, preferences, and interests. And if you look at customization on the other hand, specifications are set by the customer and the customer has full control of it. So the best example to side by side compare personalization with customization is online music subscription services like Spotify which is recommending music based on your playback history. So that is basically personalization. Customization on the other hand is you creating a music playlist manually. So what's driving this personalization trend? So there are three main drivers of personalization at scale or what's enabling and accelerating personalization at scale. The first is custom expectations. So if you look at digital products and services, it's very easy to record customer behavior. What are the features that they like? What are the products that they like? What are the features that they use the most in a digital product or service? But if you look at the physical products and services, it's really hard to capture the customer's usage of certain equipment. For example, your toaster. The company who's making your toaster have no idea about how many times you use a toaster per month and do you prefer a light toast or a dark toast so they can't specifically understand what are your preferences are so customers expect the same level of personalization at scale for physical products and services as well then we have another driver which is delivering value from data so with data massive amounts of information is collected about the customer what their preferences are what their interests are and all these sorts of things so what's the value that you are generating from the data that you collect? How can you transform the massive amount of data that you collected to something useful that delivers both value to the business and to the customer as well? And then finally we have the maturity of machine learning and artificial intelligence as well as many other technologies which is enabling businesses to deliver personalization at scale. So now let's look at a few key statistics to really understand the impact of personalization at scale. Well. It's estimated that personalization requires acquisition cost by nearly 50%. So acquisition cost is basically the cost of winning a customer to purchase a product or service. And also, it's estimated that when you increase, the omnichannel personalization will eventually result in an increase in the overall customer spending around 500%. And also, 85% of the users expect and accept personalization to be a part of online retail. And about 77% of consumers will choose, recommend or pay more for personalization. And finally, 87% of businesses see an increase in key metrics when personalization at scale is enabled. Then we are also noticing this trend of increase in one-on-one -on -one experiences. So if you look at businesses in the olden days, the business owner used to have a personal relationship with the customer, the most loyal customers who regularly come to their shop. But when the businesses expand and grow, it's no longer possible to have that personalized relationship with the customer. But with technology, it's possible to have one-on-one -on -one experiences because personalization at scale enables businesses to have that one-on-one -on -one interactions with the customer, technology enabling much more richer and deeper relationships with the customer. Then we're also seeing the increased adoption of artificial intelligence, machine learning to scale personalization. So using things like artificial intelligence, which is basically giving the computers to think like human beings, businesses are taking the maximum advantage of using these advanced intelligent technologies to really create a massive competitive advantage for them. So using these tools, 
to show product recommendations and upselling products and services to customers are also seen right now. Then we're also seeing that businesses are prioritizing a lot on first party data, which is basically all the data that the customer consensually give to the business rather than using third party tracking cookies and all the other sorts of data collection methods to track customer data. So there are lots of privacy laws that are happening right now, especially in terms of the European Union using GDPR or what we call the General Data Protection Regulation and so many other countries coming up with strong legal frameworks to ensure that the customers have access to that data and own that data rather than businesses. So businesses also are starting to realize the importance of privacy and the strong regulations and transform themselves to get data directly from the customer itself with their consent. Then we are also seeing the trends of augmented reality or what we call AR and virtual reality or VR. So these technologies enable full immersion or a full change in reality that enables businesses to really customize how they offer the products and services to the customer. So personalizing and enhancing the experience for customers, these technologies enable to create consistent experiences despite geographical and physical boundaries and we can successfully implement concepts like virtual try before you buy. So we can do this for things like shoes, clothing and other accessories like watches and jewelry. Then also we are seeing this whole trend of hyper-personalization which is basically using the real-time behavioral data of customers to provide real-time product and service personalized offers, promotions and other similar services and products to customers. Then we are also noticing this trend of gamification which is basically using gamification strategies like leaderboards, different levels and things like quests where you have to do things and then you have to unlock and go to the next level. So just like computer games to keep us interactive and much more engaged with the business, businesses are also using this gamification strategies. Then we are also noticing other trends like visual search. So searching for products and services using images are gaining popularity with the exponential growth of things like artificial intelligence. Normally all of us are very familiar with searching search engines like Google using text. But now with advanced technologies like artificial intelligence and machine learning, we can do visual searches. Meaning we can just upload a picture and then find similar images or find the product that was uploaded. So in case you decide to go window shopping, you can capture the product and then upload it and then find the product that you are looking for. And finally, finding the right balance between offering personalization and protecting privacy. So strong privacy laws globally and regionally are forcing businesses to reconsider how they collect, process, store, analyze and disseminate data and also First party data is the key to build trust of consumers. So we're seeing this massive trend in the marketplace where privacy first businesses are more preferred by customers. So customers nowadays value transparency, authenticity and honesty on how businesses collect their data and getting the consent of customers and also abiding by the customer's request to delete certain data if they request to do so. Well, that's about it for Key Insight 4, enabling personalization at scale. I'll see you on another lecture.